For this video, I'd like to talk about the very basics of equations and effectively solving for x or whatever variable we decide to use. And for this particular video, I want to focus on just addition and subtraction, these one step equations. All right, so they're solving equations, but there's only going to be one step involved. And that step is usually going to be addition or subtraction. So we have this equation x plus 7 equals 12. So the first thing I would recommend doing is trying to make sense of this in English. So whenever you see your variable, you can think of that in your mind as what number or some number. You know, either of those would work in most cases. So what number plus 7 and then we have our equal sign 12. So equals 12. So what number plus 7 gives us 12? Or what number when I add 7 to it gives us 12? So that's one way to interpret this using words rather than mathematical symbols. And hopefully it'll help develop a little bit of intuition. Because once we rephrase this with words, you might be able to guess your way to the answer. You might be able to think, well, 5 plus 7 gives us 12. So in this case, x would be 5. And in some of the most basic questions, you can just kind of think your way through to the answer like this. But eventually, your answers are going to be fractions or decimals, and it's going to become basically impossible to just kind of guess your way to the answer. And so in that case, we need kind of a step-by-step -step mathematical process for actually solving these equations. So let's rewrite this down below. So we have, let me change colors, x plus 7 equals 12. And what I would recommend is to think in terms of opposites. So effectively, our goal here, and I'll make sense of this in a moment, our goal here is to solve for x. Right? We want to get x equals something, right? So we have to get x by itself on the same side of the equation. So when I say think in terms of opposites, I want you to think in terms of opposite operations. So maybe I'll put that in. And remember, an operation would be something like adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. And let me make a small little box here. Now, I'm just going to start with the basics, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, but you can expand this to all kinds of operations in math. In fact, usually when you do find an operation in math, there is some operation that kind of pairs with it. Like multiplying and dividing are effectively the same thing, they're just opposites. right? Multiplication is repeated addition, and you can think of division as repeated subtraction. So they're kind of the same thing in a broader sense. They just go in opposite directions. Same thing like if I were to square a number or square root a number. These are opposite operations to each other, squaring and square rooting. And if you go all the way to calculus, you'll find that you have derivatives and integrals, two opposite operations. So you find this pattern all throughout math. But for the basic stuff, think about first addition and subtraction, actually let me use different colors so that we can color code this. So adding and subtracting are opposites. When you look at the number line, let's say three plus two or three minus two, on the number line you're at three, and when you add, you go to the right two units and get to five, and when you subtract, you go to the left two units and get to one. But in both cases, you're just counting two in this case, either to the left or the right. They're effectively the same idea, just in opposite directions. So addition and subtraction pair up together, but also multiplying and dividing pair up together. And one other way to think about these as opposites is that, like let's say you have four and then you add five and subtract five. Notice that you added and subtracted the same number and they canceled each other out. Same thing if you had 4 and you multiply by 5 and divide by 5. 4 times 5 is 20, divided by 5 gives us 4. They canceled each other out. So that's the theme of these opposite operations, they cancel each other. So what's the point of introducing all this? Well, 
let's start with our x plus 7. And we know our goal is to get x equals something. All right, we know it's going to be 5, but we want to prove it to ourselves. So we have this plus 7, right? We have x plus 7, and we know we got to get x by itself. So right now it's got this plus 7 kind of attached to it. And so what we can do to get rid of it is do the opposite of addition. Because if we subtract 7, then these will cancel each other out. Plus 7 minus 7 is 0, and we'd be left with just x. Now, you can't just subtract 7 anywhere you want. If you do it on both sides of the equation, though, it's okay to do. Because then we're not effectively changing the equation. Right? If you have something like 9 equals 9 and you take away 3 on each side, it's still a true statement. You still get 6 equals 6. But if you just took away 3 on one side, then you would get 6 equals 9, which is obviously not true. So you can subtract or add to either side of the equation, but the main theme is that you got to do the same thing to both sides. So we know plus 7 minus 7, let me just write this over here, that's 0. So these cancel each other out, and 12 minus 7 is 5, and that's our answer. All right, so a lot of work just to build up the first problem. But now that we have the main ideas and the themes, you'll see that these will go fairly quickly. So let's try some more. Let's say we have, we'll use a different letter. Let's say we have y plus 8 equals 14. All right, and again, we are we want to get y by itself, right? That's our goal, y equals something. And right now it's got this plus 8 attached to it. So we want to do the opposite of addition here. We want to do subtraction. So if we subtract that same quantity that we're adding, we know that plus 8 minus 8, that that's just 0. They will cancel each other out. And we have to do the same thing on the other side. Otherwise, we change the equation into something that's no longer the same. And y plus 8 minus 8, these cancel. And 14 minus 8 is 6. So y is 6. And now the beauty of solving these equations is that you can always make sure that you're right, which is kind of a cool thing to do. You can know for sure that you're correct if you take your answer and you plug it back in to the original equation. And then you just want to verify, does it actually make something true? So y is 6. Now we're just kind of evaluating an expression here. We plug in 6 for y. And when we add 8 to that, we do get 14. So because we got back something true, we can feel very confident that this is the right answer. So once you do get an answer to these equations, it's imperative that you go back and you plug it in and check. Okay, let's try another basic one. Again, I'm going to change up the letter again. Let's do B. Let's say we subtract 4 equals 22. All right, so this problem is a little bit different because now we have B minus 4. But effectively, it's the same process. Our goal is we want to solve for our letter. Remember, this is some number when I take away 4 gives me 22. So what number when I take away 4 from it do I get 22? You can probably guess it. But again, we want a mathematical way to solve this. So right now, we want to get b by itself, but it's being subtracted by 4. So to cancel out this minus 4, we want to do the opposite. We want to add that same quantity that we're subtracting. So we want to add 4, and we'll do it to both sides just so that we don't change the problem. And we know that when we take minus 4 plus 4, that this will cancel out, and we get to 0. So that's 0. We get b is 26. And then we check it. Is it true that 26 minus 4 equals 22? And that is true, which means we can feel confident that that's the right answer. All right, so those are the basic one-step equations without any fractions or decimals. But now, let's consider a couple more difficult problems with fractions. 